So when making the anvil stand, I'm using 2x12s, just regular construction lumber. You want the final height of your anvil at the top of the anvil to be about your top knuckle if you're standing straight up, relaxed, and that gives you a full swing with your hammer. So mine is going to be about 35 inches, yours could be different, and so I'm just cutting these boards to 27 inches and I'm cutting the corners off the round corners because I think it'll look better square and I just kind of cut them down roughly with the miter saw and then do a final uh, square them up after I rip them with the uh, sled it's just a lot more accurate I don't really use the miter saw as a final uh, step I think it's just better for rough cutting I got that Delta miter saw that uh, just a 10 inch but you know it cuts these full 2x12s uh, just a 10 inch blade but cuts these two 2x12s two you know all the way through and so now I'm just putting some regular wood glue on these and I'm gonna screw them together I could have planed them, but um, I'm just hoping that uh, there's just a slight cup to these and the screws kind of pulled them together so it worked out pretty well. Just repeated the process for all eight boards to get the full width. I added a 2x4 around the bottom just to give it a little bit of extra width at the bottom for more stability. I did the same thing, cut off the, cut off the round corners. Uh, to make it look a little bit better. Now I'm measuring for some angle iron. I figured it'd probably get some damage from tools and whatnot, so I just wanted to protect it with angle iron on the bottom. And also around the top, I wanted to wrap it with some two by quarter flat bar. And that way it wouldn't um, split the top of it. Here I'm going to clip these corners. I did clean up these angle iron pieces with a uh, little wheel and wire brush that you saw there. And like I said, yeah, clipping those corners. Drilling holes for lag screws. And after I put those on, I'll weld it all up. This is the MIG welder I use, Miller, Millermatic uh, 211. Uh, it's been pretty good for me. It's not for commercial use really, but it's probably an uh, upper level of you know, household use. And it kind of automatically adjusts the wire feed and the voltage for you. It seems to work pretty well, um, so you just set the wire, size of wire that you have right here, the diameter, I got 035 in there, right, or excuse me, 030. And then you just, um, we're gonna be welding a little quarter inch and then it gives you a range for the quarter inch as far as the voltage uh, right there. So I'm gonna, I usually put it on the higher end of each section here. And um, got a little bit of quarter inch at the top of our, uh, base and then a little bit of eighth inch at the bottom so let's get this welded up I cut some pieces of 3 16 thick angle iron it's two by three I believe and cut four pieces four inches long and four pieces two inches long and right here I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm going to drill some holes here for some lag bolts. These are going to be anchors that I'm um, going to connect my chain to. And as you can see later, I'll tighten these up and that'll hold the anvil on. Mm -hmm. 
Now I got some double clevises here to connect the chain to. They're hooked onto some eye bolts here. These are the stronger kind that aren't split. So these are closed and they're forged, so they're a lot stronger. Doing a preliminary check with the chain, get the length figured out. And I'll take that back off and cut her down and hook it on to the double clevises. And then we'll get her tightened up. Now it's time to hit some metal with it. Be sure to like the video. Subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Start your comment below with what color of welder I have so I know you watch till the very end. I appreciate you guys.